we oh, ran into no. each other. No, we did that. it was so perfectly choreographed. We tried. <laughs> we did it again. All right. So this is VMP's Tuning Tuesday, season two, episode forty-one. And today we're going to talk about dino stuff. And All what, dino things. What the dino means and why it should not hurt your butt. And, and if you name your dino the Dream Crusher, you are not original. And you're not cool. There is only four thousand of them. Yep. <laughs> Called that because everyone says their dino reads low. All of them. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's funny because generally they, it's the ones that, oh, this dino reads low. No, no, it doesn't. It reads high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're going to explain why they read low and why they read high and all things in between. Yeah. So, and there's the standard correction factor and there's the SAE correction mm -hmm. factor. And then so, the five others. The Japanese. The, uh, the Japanese. <laughs> they have European, Japanese. European um, factors. And there's the almighty uncorrected. So we, we should start with what, what, what do the correction factors do? Why do they exist in the world today? Ah, so the correction factors are to even the playing field. Mm -hmm. They are to give the people that are in Colorado a fair shake at what we make down here at sea level. So the <laughs> correction factor is an estimation of what the car would make under different conditions. Correct. So, so it's, it, it levels weird. the playing field. Because actually, there are certain days, as you know, down here in Florida, mm -hmm. if you get a low uh, DA or low density altitude day, you know, it's nice and cold and crisp out down here in Florida, the correction factor will actually hurt your numbers. Your mm -hmm. uncorrected numbers would be higher mm -hmm. than the uh, corrected numbers. Yep. So, um, so corrected numbers are only really relevant to internal combustion engines. Correct. That rely on air. Correct. So if you put a Tesla on a dyno. Right. <laughs> Should you look at corrected or uncorrected? <sighs> You're right. Uncorrected. You were right. You would look at uncorrected. I never thought about that. Yeah. Um, I got to think. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can't even, I don't even know if you can dyno a Tesla. It's too smart. Yeah, because you don't have engine <laughs> speed. You just have to do, you have to do speed. roller speed and it would, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Moving on. So where do you start from there? You start with uh, the explaining the Why correction ones. factors exist. Well, we explained so that one, so that's yeah, so just that's, to level the playing field. And what he means by level the playing field, he means that if you dyno your car in Colorado and you dyno your same car in Florida, same tune, same other conditions, let's say the other, the other conditions aside from atmospheric pressure, let's say the humidity and the temperature are the exact same when you dyno it in Colorado yes. and the exact same when you dyno it in Florida, Correct. the only variable then is atmospheric pressure. Correct. Um, so the intent of the correction factors at that point is to most accurately simulate or give you a calculation of what your car would make for that correction factor. So SAE and STD yep. use different temperature, pressure, and Correct. humidity Temperature multipliers. being the biggest. Yeah. I don't remember off the top of my head. I believe standard is based on 60 degrees. Is it say I 60 believe, or 55? Yeah, then, I think it's 60. And then SAE, I believe, is based on 72 or 75. Something 72 like that. to 77, somewhere in that range. Something like that. Um, but essentially, STD assumes a colder day, better conditions. SAE assumes a more nominal day. Correct, yeah. Um, and then your uncorrected is what your car actually made on that dyno on that day. Yes. What the dyno observed for horsepower and torque. And I think the main purpose of this is so that it's, it's to standardize the industry. Mm -hmm. So you know that regardless of where you live, your car should make X amount of horsepower. So the correction factors is the industry's way of... Making uh, sure no one advertises dyno numbers. Right. It's, it's the industry's them. way of making sure that your, your car dyno is the same as everyone else's with mm -hmm. similar mods, modifications, et cetera. Exactly. So... Um, that's the, I think the main purpose of it. The other thing is, is so, you know, in, in a perfect world, if all dynos are calibrated correctly, you can dyno your car in Colorado, in the cold air. Mm -hmm. You can take that car, you can drive it down here to Florida at sea level in hot soupy air, mm -hmm. and it will dyno exactly the same because the correction factor is going to take that into consideration. And again, that's in theory. Right. I said in a perfect world. Yeah. In application, it's not that perfect. Um, it's, it tries. It tries. But there's so many other things going on just with what's happening with your engine. Like during the pull, the dyno itself doesn't account for engine coolant temperature, intake air temperature, um, 
changes in boost from yep. higher atmosphere pressure, yeah. higher atmospheric pressure to lower atmospheric pressure. And right. If you still have like one that. of those old dinosaur carburetors, it doesn't take into account jetting changes based exactly. on elevation changes, things like that. Yeah, it doesn't take into account so mechanical changes in the car for sure. It's to basically give you a good rule of thumb of like where you stand against someone else that's running an SAE number. Yep. And all, all along the same lines, there's actually a SAE specification on how dyno, how cars are, how engines or cars are supposed to be dynoed and Correct. all that. Exactly. Dyno jet, I'd say, is probably going to be most common, followed closely by Mustang dyno. Yep, dyno jet and MD Mustang dyno. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got like the dyno comms and dyno packs. There's dyno comms, dyno packs. There's that super sea flow. And there's super flow, sea and land, or yeah. air, is land and sea. Uh, Mainline. Main, yeah. Yeah. So those you kind of. Yeah, Maha, all those guys. And and then. This kind of leads us into another topic of a dyno is just a tuning tool. And that's where we're going to go with right. this now. It's, yep. it's a tool we use to calibrate a vehicle so that, A, we're not out on the road doing 140 miles an hour if we don't have to. Um, <laughs> and Yelling Ricky Bobby out the window. <laughs> exactly. It's to isolate variables, get Correct. it into like a, a static situation of it's just yep. moving a roller. Um, against a load or not against a load or just against the load of the roller. Um, right. Uh, and it basically gives us a, a means by which to test the car to observe changes in what we do from a tuning standpoint and verify that the changes that we're making are the changes that we need to make. Correct. And they give you a, they give you a sight into what's going on. I, mm -hmm. I use the example, of, let's say we're doing a Coyote and it's got variable cam timing. Mm -hmm. So you have this beautiful torque curve. Mm -hmm. All right, it's dynoed in, and we say, okay, I'm going to take, and I'm going to put three degrees, I'm going to advance the exhaust cam three degrees, mm -hmm. and then we do another pull. So now we have this mirror image, but all of a sudden, between 3,500 and 4,500, we have now gained three foot-pounds of torque mm -hmm. in that little tiny area, okay? So now that we know, you would never ever be able to map that out on a street or a drag strip or something like that. Yeah, a drag right. strip if we're talking about 10 pound feet in one specific region right. of the sweep. So now you can look at that, that and you can say, well, it obviously did not want those three degrees across the board. It only wanted those three degrees between 3,500 and 400. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to put the other two back mm -hmm. and leave those there. Mm -hmm. That's something that the dyno allows you to do that you can't do with a street or a drag strip situation. Or attempting to find MBT. Yep, um, there is that. On, so timing applies, the yeah, timing applies the same thing, whereas mm -hmm. you're adding uh, timing you may have picked up in some areas but not picked up in others. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, a dyno is a tuning tool. And a lot of you guys, no offense, mm -hmm. you take your dyno numbers to heart. Mm -hmm. And there is so many things that can affect a dyno number that you know, people like to get in their feels mm -hmm. because so-and-so's car made this with similar mods and my car made this with similar regards. You guys, there's something wrong with it or your tune sucks yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's simply not the case. It's actually very easy to manipulate a dyno number um, on top of the fact that it's just, just something simple as dyno maintenance, equipment yeah. maintenance can affect it. Yeah, and it's worth saying that Dyno Jets, of all the ones that I've messed with, is certainly one of the most manipulated, manipulation-proof dynos. Yes. As they, long as you're not going out of your way to it do It's still so. do it. Now, I use my own personal dyno for an example. Mm -hmm. um, my, on, my, uh, on mine that I had, the Barrow sensor mm -hmm. started to go bad, mm -hmm. and I didn't catch it. So it didn't quit working, it just mm -hmm. started to go bad. So normally we're down here at sea level, so it would normally read like 29 and change. Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden, the barrel was reading 27. Mm -hmm. And I didn't catch it. So I had like a six month span where I was like, wow, these cars are making a lot of power. They're really dialing really well. Mm -hmm. And then it took me putting a bone stock coyote on the dyno. Someone brought a coyote in his bone stock and we dynoed it. And the thing made like 410 of the tire stock and I went, Mm, something wait wrong. a minute <laughs> so i started looking and i found out that my barrow sensor was bad mm -hmm. and i had to send it off to uh dino jet and they fixed it or whatever so it's something could be simple as that something mm -hmm. that's it's a sensor just reading a little tiny bit off 
can throw all your numbers out the window. And it's worth mentioning that had you been looking at uncorrected numbers that entire time, your yeah. numbers never would have been skewed. Exactly. So that comes back to if you guys, there's always the the standard versus SAE. Or I love that argument online. What is your what is your dino sheet trap? What is mm -hmm. it? What, is, what are the what are the traps based exactly. on the standard numbers? Yeah. A uh, poor old Brett LaSalle. Remember that whole thing? Yeah. So that that was like a thousand comments deep of SAE versus standard. Yeah. If you guys really want to argue, put up the uncorrected mm -hmm. because then that's it. Yeah. That's there's no weather, there's no altitude, there's no humidity. Mm -hmm. That is what that car made on that dyno, plain as day. Yeah. So you can take your uncorrected numbers. Mm -hmm. um, like, like for example, sometimes it'll help you. Mm -hmm. So there is that argument as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks question. like we got Mike Djokovic. When and when not to use a load on the dyno. Ah. So a load is beneficial on high horsepower cars if yes, you need a longer sampling rate. Yes. Um, let's or not. I shouldn't say longer sampling rate. A longer duration of time with which to sample so that your Correct. rate of acceleration is slowed down so that the data you get is a little bit less transient than it has the potential to be. Correct. Um, and then simulating road load when generating torque tables and stuff like that, having a load against it and yep. having a known load against it. Like if you know how much torque it takes to push a Mustang going down the road at 60 miles an hour on zero degree grade, then you have that torque value. You tell it at this mile an hour or at, at this mile an hour, I need this much torque pulled out of it or pushed against it. Um, or you can do a engine speed based load torque yep. for it depends on what kind of Dyna calibration jet. you're doing mm -hmm. um you know the dyno the load on the dyno does a lot of things if you're just trying to make a number there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with an inertia dyno that does a nice sweep and you've mm -hmm. got your your numbers across the board and you're done there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that and it's mm -hmm. very accurate mm -hmm. um when you're actually calibrating is when the load comes in handy Mm -hmm. um i use um i use the hellcats for example because mm -hmm. these things they make so much torque Mm -hmm. for such a broad RPM range that when you try and tune them on like a 224X Dynojet, little tiny mm -hmm. roller, the, um, the pull's over within a few seconds. Like it's done. Yep. And you have just this little tiny window of data. You're mm -hmm. zooming in on it, trying to, you know. Enhance. Yeah, enhance. Enhance. So, so that's where a load comes in handy because you can now take this, this dyno pull that might take two seconds and you can now stretch this out where it takes six, seven, eight, however many seconds you want it to take because mm -hmm. it, it slows it down and because it applies the resistance to it. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you have this big wide window of data to see what happens at you know, each specific data it, point. Right. So that's where it comes in handy. Another thing is when you're tuning uh, standalone systems. Mm -hmm. um, Especially VE-based systems. Yes, V. Yeah, exactly. VE-based systems where you have a gra or a table, a two X and Y axis graph, and mm -hmm. you've got to sit there and you've got to sweep it. So mm -hmm. some dynos will have closed loop uh, PID control mm -hmm. that'll hold it at a certain RPM. You tell it a target RPM and it yep. applies and it'll the load keep it there. against it to keep yep. it against there. So yeah. that comes in real handy when you're doing, let's say, you want to do all of the 3000 RPM column. Mm -hmm. So you say, boom, you set that thing at 3000 RPM. Now I can sit there at, at no throttle and I can go all the way down that column to wide open throttle and 20 pounds of boost and that dyno is going to hold it at 3000 RPM. Mm -hmm. So I can get that whole column dialed in. And mm -hmm. I can move on to my 3500 column and do the whole thing. Dial that whole column in. So that's where the load comes in. For the average user, you have no use for load whatsoever. For a calibration point of view, it is an amazing thing when you yeah. when you need it. With math-based stuff, it typically isn't too much of an issue. You, no. can, you can play with stuff and get math-based stuff pretty well dialed in, even without a load-based a load -based dyno. But uh, I'd say that the other beneficial place for it is in big diesel trucks with giant turbos. It helps get the turbo spooled yes. and lit um, that, I trucks. did not have a loaded dyno um, mm -hmm. at my shop. It was just a regular 224X. Mm -hmm. And I had diesel uh, people that would rent the dyno. And mm -hmm. it was like, you, there's not enough load on the it's roller. Like it's like you got to brake the, boost it just to get it lit. Yeah, and they're, then it they're trying to dyno them in overdrive. It. And like we had one that the guy usually runs 80 pounds of boost on it. And it was like the dyno, it wouldn't make over 40 on the dyno. It just, mm -hmm. there wasn't any resistance there. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to like leave the brakes on the dyno and mm -hmm. doing all kinds of craziness, trying to give this thing some kind of load. And that's where something like an eddy current controlled dyno yes. or a load dyno or a Mustang dyno yep. or something of that effect would come in handy. Um, yep, absolutely. So for, we got 10 or 80 daily asking 1400 horsepower, 130 mile an hour trap, mile per hour will always be the best indicator. Absolutely. 
Yeah, to a, to a certain degree. Yeah, you have to know the weight of the vehicle and you yep. have to know the DA conditions you're operating and under. And again, that's going to give you on corrected numbers. Yeah. Because that's going to be your car weighs that X amount of uh, pounds and it uh, traps this speed. That is a direct correlation provided that it's a clean run. There's not excessive spinning, yada, yada, yada. Don't have issues with shifts or anything right. like that. Um, yeah. However, the 130 mile an hour trap speed, like as I said earlier, is not going to help us from a calibration point of view. It'll tell mm -hmm. you if you're making overall more power. Mm -hmm. It's not going to tell you if you're you made more power in the 2,000 to 4,000 RPM range. That's well, not going to help you. Is that quarter mile trap or eighth mile trap? Well, there's that too. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, if that's eighth well, mile, that's he, probably. I think what he's saying is, is people will claim, oh, I made 1,400 horsepower, but then the and car only traps 130. 130. Yeah. And like, yeah, that ain't working. Yeah, the math doesn't add up there. He, he is correct about that. Where they, and that's where that phrase, uh, you don't raise what dyno sheets. What is your dyno trap? Yeah, what is your dyno trap where we don't raise yeah. dyno sheets? Um, so. And then we got Boss Man 12 Boss. Did you guys ever dyno the Boss 302 in stock form to see what it really makes for horsepower? Ford says it's 444 stock. Sounds like a made-up number. Well, so all the numbers yeah. lately are SAE numbers that Ford puts out based on engine dyno. Yep. Following the SAE procedure, I think it's SAE J, J J23 or something? Like 2394? 2394, something like 1894. Something I can't like remember. That. It's, it's in a, like any advertised horsepower you see. There's usually a little asterisk that says SAEJ and then the number for the SAE approved testing for measuring horsepower and torque. Correct. Um, but that's and that's at the engine. Yeah, and that's engine horsepower. So, and I believe there's certain specifications that has to be with all the accessories on it because they used to yeah. back in the '60s. Mm -hmm. They changed the SAE. The, or well, I'm sorry, this might even have been before SAE. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, um, in the horsepower wars, the '60s and '70s, you know, early '70s there was a different way of dynoing them. They dynoed them without accessories on them. Um, they dynoed them with different exhaust systems on it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So they would make this uh, a higher number than what it actually made in the car. Yeah. Um, that has gone. Now I believe they have to have all the accessories they're going to have. Mm -hmm. They have to have this, the correct fluids that they're supposed to have. They have to have the actual production exhaust system hooked up to it. Yeah. Things like that. So generally, it's actually more accurate now. Yeah, it's typically more accurate now. The only variable I'll say you see people dealing with is what fuel is in the tank. Yep. Because these cars have a, like adaptive knock sensor control, if you have... 87 octane in the car, it's not going to dyno anywhere near 444 horsepower crank Correct. that it did factory. I think most of the factory performance calibrations are based around 91 octane. So the numbers that you get are usually 91. And if I recall correctly, the 11 to 14 GTs were stated to have X amount of horsepower in 91 yep. and Y on 93. I believe it was one of the first engines that had a dual rating, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. I remember that being a big thing in like 2011. Where it was like, what, what, what? Yeah, it had a dual rating system, where, and it was 87. They actually had mm -hmm. an 87 rating versus a uh, 93 rating, yeah, or 91 rating. I remember it was a whole big thing because it was the first engine to do that. Um, so, so yeah, I, in terms of stock Boss 302s, I don't recall numbers offhand. I have them in my computer. I want to say they make low 400s to the tire. I was going to say like 400, 410s probably yeah, stock. I but believe. I did one, like a Laguna Seca, like years ago when they came out. And I and want it, to say it was like that. It's probably actually closer to about 390. But yeah, 390 to 400 wheels, probably what a stock Boss 302 makes. I can confirm on my computer if you really have a So honestly, I think, I think their it. 444 stock is about right. Because again, that's engine horsepower. Mm -hmm. You have the transmission using power. You have the dry shaft using power. You have the mm -hmm. differential using power. And honestly, even tires, the yeah. types of tires that you have in the car will affect it. The size, the weight of the wheel. Gear ratio. Gear ratio. All that stuff plays a fact into how much power. That's why I'm noticing an increase in hub dynos lately. Mm -hmm. so we haven't talked about that. Yeah. Now there's the onslaught of the hub dynos, which I love them. Mm -hmm. Because one, they're a loaded dyno. And two, it completely eliminates, it's still technically a rear wheel horsepower number, mm -hmm. but it completely eliminates tire slip and spin mm -hmm. out of the equation. Yeah. So as we ha as we live in a day and age that now everything seems to make four thousand horsepower, mm -hmm. they seem to work really well. well. Then you don't have to worry about a blowout. Yeah, there is that <laughs> as well. So that plays a role in it too because a, a slick will always dyno less than a hard street tire. Always. Yeah. I don't care who you are. It's yeah. going to happen because it, unless that hard street tire spinning. Right. But even then, generally, a hard street tire actually hooks better on a dyno. Uh, after a couple hits than a, mm -hmm. than a slick tire. So let's see, moving I'll on. I'll let you grab the Nastang. 
Oh, you hit Nastang 87 XX. Ooh. Extra large. Extra. Extra saucy. There we uh, go. Comments on drivetrain loss. Example, Gen 3 GTs making 420 horsepower rated at 460 to the crank. That's only a 9.8% loss with those numbers. Are drive lines becoming more that was previously at the crankshaft that is now making it all the way back to the wheels? Yeah. There's some circles that will say that some of the modern transmissions automatics have as little as 15% drivetrain loss and some of the manuals have as low as 11 to 12% drivetrain right. loss. Depending on fluid types and stuff like that. Exactly. And I can't say that underrating is a thing. It is, but it isn't. It's not as bad as it used to be. It used to be pretty bad. Yeah. Now it's like if they followed the SAE specification for what a car makes for horsepower, yes. that's what it makes under those conditions. And that's what I think, that's what I was kind of getting at is I don't feel that they're underrating them intentionally. It's not like, oh, it's for insurance purposes. That's yeah. not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. I feel that they're not necessarily underrating them. It's that they have very strict guidelines on how they can operate that engine and, and certify it. Mm -hmm. It has to be certified on a certain fuel, like we just talked a little bit earlier. All these conditions have to be meet. Mm -hmm. And I think what's running, what we're running into is that real world conditions are a little bit more forgiving mm -hmm. than the test certification conditions. Yeah. And so generally you have the engine is going to make a little bit more in the real world than it does on Fords. Because we now live in an era where if they certify something at 460 crank mm -hmm. and it doesn't make 460 crank, they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. If that thing, if someone goes and for whatever reason, the EPA gets a hold of it and they dyno it and it only makes 445 to the crank, mm -hmm. they're going to be in trouble for that. So Case in point, 99 Cobra. 99 Cobra got sued over it. They <laughs> yeah. had to have a, a recall because it didn't make the power that they said it made. Revised intake manifold? Was so it a revised that, cylinder head as so well? So I don't feel that they underrate them intentionally so much as that they err on the side of caution. Well, they have to as per the, I want to say the specification is it has to maintain that peak horsepower number for over a certain, a certain period of time. Of time. Yeah. It's not... A lot of dyno testing that you see done um, these days is over a transient state. <laughs> surfaces. <laughs> it's not um, a way of life. A dyno is not a dick measuring contest. It's a tool. So Unless you go to a dyno competition. In which it case is. it is. <laughs> but at least you're all using the same ruler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we just killed Brian again. <laughs> yeah, and he's dead. Um, David Delgado, what's the deal with Mustang Dino Sheets having the option to show Dino Jet estimated horsepower? We're just talking about this. Which is more believable? Believable is a WC horsepower number correcting to a set weather parameter over current? I don't understand that question. I'm not sure what. Can but you I clarify can what yeah, you mean you by WC? Yeah, you can clarify on that one. But the second, well, the first part we can get. We were so talking about this a the Mustang other day. dyno that is calibrated properly reads a good number. A yes. Mustang dyno that's calibrated like 90% of people calibrate those things. Oh, yeah, it reads low. And I know it says 800 horsepower, but everything on this dyno that reads 800 horsepower goes eights. Fix your dyno. Yes. <laughs> You're using the wrong multipliers or yes. the wrong parasitic multiplier or the wrong load. You're doing it wrong. Just fix your dyno. It's not and cool. It, that And I, I agree with that. I know that that's what a lot of people do in this industry. And they, a lot of people say, oh, it's a Mustang dyno, so you automatically add 15%. No. Yeah. That's not true. Mm -hmm. That is not true Typically, the way that most are calibrated, if, they're off by about that much. But a Mustang dyno calibrated properly... Should read the same. Should read the same I as a dyno jet. I know at... Um, at Powertech, we had both. We had a Superflow loaded on one side, and we had a Dino Jet on the other. Mm -hmm. I know you could take something off that. We, we did it multiple mm -hmm. times. You could take something off the Superflow mm -hmm. and put it right on the Dino Jet, and they would be mirror images. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. That's when both of your dynos are set And that's the whole point correctly. of the tool. Yes. Is to have an accurate measuring stick. Yes. In this state, in this state, in this state, in this state, and you're all measuring from the same stick. I feel that the Mustang Dino thing has almost become a Band-Aid. I don't mean to be harsh, mm -hmm. but it's become a Band-Aid where it, it generally, I gotta tread lightly here. Mm -hmm. It generally comes from shops that maybe are less experienced or I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it generally comes from the fact that when someone goes, oh, they're, they're disappointed in mm -hmm. what their car made. So the shop owner goes, oh, well, that's because it's a Mustang dyno. you got to add 15%. And then the customer feels better about that. In the, the you most... know what I mean? And in reality, it probably doesn't make 15% more. It may be just the calibration in the car. Mm -hmm. 
or the car or the tires or the gears or any of those things that play into the, the that, factors and, that... And that is kind of the problem when we were talking about dyno sh types. Mm -hmm. The Mustang dyno, I feel, the, in my opinion, the Mustang dyno is the easiest dyno to manipulate. Mm -hmm. And so herein lies the problem. It's the easiest dyno to calibrate, mm -hmm. but it's also the e easiest dyno to have wrong. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that a lot of them are just set up wrong. Yeah. And I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. Yeah. So and I think a, we covered that. Oh, there is a dyno sheet I so recently for, for those showed that, weather corrected horsepower. Oh, so it showed your correction, your correction your factor. Your corrected horsepower. Gotcha. Yeah, so uncorrected versus corrected would be the weather correct horsepower. And that goes back to the SAE and standard that we talked about. Exactly. A lot of uh, A lot of dynos will spit out an uncorrected number and then turn around. He probably was on a Mustang dyno because mm -hmm. they're real good about that, that little green printout over there. Exactly. And it'll say the uncorrected number and then with correction factor. Mm -hmm. That's that SAE and standard thing that we're talking about. Um, if you want a pop culture reference to dyno numbers and the way that people feel about them, watch South Park's TMI episode. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you go that. different dynos. It's fantastic. Um, but should we get into smoothing now? Oh, Lord what Jesus. is smoothing? Lord <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's the other one. What is your what is your What's dyno smoothing on? Oh God. That's um, because Justin uh, was that two years ago, a year ago, two years ago, posted that one with smoothing at zero and it was still jagging and it like broke the internet. Yep. It started like there was fights of the caliber were, that I could not believe. There was riots in the streets. There street was over that. riots in the streets <laughs> because this thing had a jagged dyno line and it made like a thousand or something like that. I think it made like 1020 on smoothing zero. Right. Smoothing five, it made like nine. 984 or 998. Yeah, and everyone was just, there was riots. It's in the wrong, streets. it's wrong, it's wrong. You used STD, you used STD. So smoothing, smoothing was zero. So smoothing <laughs> is, that, is exactly what it sounds like. It's an, it's an averaging tool. Mm -hmm. um, a dyno is actually a very, very accurate machine to the point where it will pick up discrepancies in tire roundness, mm -hmm. tires that are out of balance. A suspension that's dry shaft causing spikes yes. and torque. So a, a dyno will pick that up. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a car that I call has a noisy drivetrain, you got mm -hmm. a tire out of balance, or even if you've got a car that's misfiring, mm -hmm. you know, you got one cylinder that's in and out, it mm -hmm. will pick up and it'll cause little spikes mm -hmm. in this dyno graph. And um, if you have it on smoothing zero, you can see those spikes. Yes. And if you, when you start applying the smoothing, whether it's smoothing average one, two, three, four, five. Yes. That's where essentially it's bringing out the the Take, sampling area where it smooths the averages. Yes. So it's like, taking your high spikes and your low spikes, and it's averaging them more and more mm -hmm. based on the number going. It brings up, it you know. to like a mean or median line. Correct. Through the through the point. So basically, we use smoothing because dynographs, if you left them on zero, would be hideous. Mm -hmm. They would all be these horrendously jagged things. And sometimes you do. And get they would be a, a, smooth stuff. There'd almost be a quarter inch gap all the way across. And the thing is, is you would have. You would run into these these jagged things where you would they basically would be plus or minus 50 horsepower across mm -hmm. the board because it's 50 down 50 up 50 down 50 up, mm -hmm. all the way across. Yep. Smoothing brings that together and it goes okay mm -hmm. we're just gonna do 25. It draws an average line between. It draws points. an average line. It makes the graph look better. It gives you a smoother sampling. And it gives you a more accurate estimate, it, estimation of what power is. But right, and it takes uh, vibrations and other things out of the equation. Yeah, and what's at the end of the day, if you have a graph that is already pretty smooth and you apply smoothing on it, the number doesn't change a lot. Correct. If you have a graph that has 100, 100 plus or minus swings in either direction, then having the, the smoothing set to zero shows like that a, boss 302 you did a with higher tire hopping. Number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's why I had the show like, this is smoothing, this is smoothing two, and this is SAE, and this is standard, and... I tried to show everybody everything, and I, I made it a point to mention the car's hopping on the dyno. I can't do anything about that. Yeah, that thing was like... I've tried moving it all <laughs> over the dyno. There's something in the suspension or the tire that's causing it to oscillate. I'm sorry. But that's the power that makes. Do you have a story about... Do you, Nastang 87, do you have a story of a car that made entirely more power than it should have and had to break someone's heart? Probably Track Attack. <laughs> track Attack does that from time to time. Yeah, it makes, Track Attack made good power with the stock engine, like when we did the manifold testing, where people were looking at those numbers as, as if they were the word of God, and yes. they put their dyno, or their car on the dyno with the same mods, 
minus gear ratio and yep. other stuff, and they're like, I don't get it. The Track Attack made this on 93. Yeah, <laughs> Track Attack has always uh, dynoed well, historically. Um, I don't know what it was about the car. I think it was the gears and the tires we had on it. Because it, yeah, it was originally a 373 car. We put 331s in it because we were maxing them out. We were maxing out the yep. 373. There's also the factor that Track Attack is ours. Mm -hmm. And if we break it, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's not exactly. good, but it's not the end of the world. We don't... Mm -hmm. We're not going to shrug our shoulders and say, oh, well, to a customer's car. Mm -hmm. So sometimes... So it's like sometimes... Track Attack we're willing to get more frisky with, and I, I kind yeah. of go out of my way to make that a point of mentioning it, mentioning it in the videos. Yo, I wouldn't yes. do this on a car that was not ours. Yes, because, and, and like I said, you're, it, almost comes into, it almost comes into a double-edged sword because we have this discussion in the dyno uh, mm -hmm. office all the time where... We want to show what our products are capable of making, mm -hmm. but we don't want to give you a fault because or unrealistic an expectation. unrealistic expectation. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. You want to say, "Hey, we made this amount of power, and we did," mm -hmm. but not everyone is going to make that amount of power, and exactly. that's the problem. Is we have a lot of uh, mm -hmm. customers that get all up in arms. They see a video and they say, "Well, I saw that car make this much. Why didn't I make that much?" Because that car is on twenty four pounds on a stock engine, like the yep. Dynograph says it is, and also they're on a different Dyno. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> there is it's, that as well. It's a circle. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, there are cars. Um, I don't have any specific stories, but there are cars that are just kind of freaks. They just seem to make more power. Exactly. And it's consistent. You can take it off and put it back on and put other cars, and it just, that car makes more power. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. There's not usually a rhyme or reason. It's just maybe the engine. Ring seal's up better. I've seen fuel quality being the fuel difference. Fuel quality being the difference. We posted a video, what, like two months ago of that? of where two cars, same exact setup, uh, two completely different dyno numbers, yep. change the fuel, solve the problem. Um, Eric, uh, was it Eric Randez or whatever from ProCharger just posted that up where mm -hmm. he had an 18 Mustang that was, it was, it picked up a hundred wheel horsepower because he changed, because the fuel in the tank was just not good fuel. Mm -hmm. Like he drained the tank, it was still 91, mm -hmm. but he drained the 91 in it and put different 91 in it, picked up a hundred to the tire because of fuel quality. No, it was that's just garbage. Ninety-one. That's the tune. No, well, that was his point of the thing. <laughs> yeah, is exactly. That your tune it's not was messed up the first tuner. time. You changed the fuel, and now the tune's better. Correct. <laughs> that's not how that works. So um, there is that. Um, so what do you want to talk about now? Little, we're two ten. We went a little bit over a little we're bit. A little bit over, but I think. Do we you guys have most... uh, any more questions you want to get in at the last minute before? All things dyno. Um, I think we covered most of it. I just wanted the, the emphasis numbers, on... Moving. I wanted to just cover... I wanted this as your public service announcement. Stop losing sleep and beating your wives <laughs> over the fact that your di car may or may not dyno well. Or your husbands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or your husbands. Um, it doesn't matter. Just enjoy exactly. your car. Is it fast? At the end of the day, <laughs> when you get in it, does it feel the way you want it to? And if it doesn't, it may not be because... The tune, it may be because you need more parts to give you that butt dyno feeling you require. Correct. Or different so, fuel or there, anything. There is that, and people named Kyle I made a, quit punching holes in walls. I made a meme a while <laughs> back that was a uh, customer, or you know that uh, movie with uh, Bird Box, I think it was? Yes. Yes, where, when they're all blindfolded? Yep. Yeah. Yes. So I made a meme of... What happens when the dyno shows you what $3,200 worth of eBay modifications did for your car? <laughs> or me, should... me showing you what... Oh, we're holding our eyelids open? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, true. Just makes you want to kill yourself sometimes because it's, it's, it's the most key thing. Talk to your tuner yes. or talk to the shop that's working on your car and get with them and figure out what you need to do to your car to achieve your goals and do it. Don't, if they tell you to do something and you trust what they're saying, do what they're telling you, because chances are if it's a, a stand-up shop, they're not telling you to do something to line their pocketbooks. They're telling you to do something because you told them you wanted to do something. Yes. They know how to get you there, and they told you how to achieve it. I yes. see that occasionally. We get those, those customers, I think every business does, where they're like, hey, I want to make this. And you're like, all right, you need to do this, 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 and this I don't to do to. that. Oh, well, I, I got a better to. deal on these, so I got these, and I got this, and you need to make it work. Nope. Well, that's not <laughs> what I told you to do to achieve this. You need different stuff. Well, I don't care. Make it work. That's not how it works, man. <laughs> um, 
and I think that uh, I think that covers most of it. I think that covered most of it. Unless Chris, we got any other questions? Dino questions? Anything like that craziness? No. Do you have any Dino questions, Chris? For someone that doesn't operate a Dino, there's probably very little people in this world that's seen more Dino Pulse. Yeah. <laughs> He even, I even, but he even has the Dino software now, remember? This I hooked is him true. up, so now he, oh, he can manipulate his own graphs. Now he can look at the graphs, change RPM and everything that he needs to change. Ooh. Ooh. We just got to hook up the, uh, the probes. We'll, we'll set a magnet on here. We'll make a trigger for RPM. And then, you know, we'll see what it does. Exactly. I mean, I, we can... <laughs> <laughs> or you're not taking it seriously enough, Brian. <laughs> scared of I'm just going to stand over here now. Um, but yeah, I guess if you guys have any questions or have uh, something else you want us to cover. Someone wants to know how much Neil's car made on the dyno. Neil's car, as in the 93 Fox body? Yeah. Or 92? I'd have to look. I don't remember. Okay. We have a dyno, uh, dyno video on it, so they can check that out. Yeah, we, uh, we should have two dyno videos. More than three, less than a thousand? Um, Neil's car is kind of an oddball in the sense that it's a Coyote Swap car, but the shifter he has doesn't allow it to lock into sport mode, so we can't actually make fourth gear poles in it. Um, so you got to do the roll in. Yeah, you, you got to do, do the old turbo four hundred roll in, three fifty roll in. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So it. I don't know. That car has never dynoed well. It's always doesn't have sport mode. Won't lock into sport mode. You lock it in a third, and it's a blower car in third gear. So. So it just kills everything. Yeah, and it's on a short tire, so it's like. And it's on the heartbreaker. <laughs> the heartbreaker. <laughs> no, uh, Neil's car is a, a fun car. He, I don't know if we did we post that video of his car yet. We posted this morning. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, you can see what his dyno traps. Just keep in mind that. Uh, Neil's car, we pulled a lot of power out to get the car to do that. Um, there is that. Like a lot of power out. His car was running, uh, I think, 990s prior to that. Didn't change pulley size or anything and pulled power out so it would run 1050s. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to see any more, if you guys want to see a video on a different topic or have us cover something else. Um, yeah, we're open to suggestions. Yeah, just let us know what you guys want to see. Sometimes we struggle with topics on what we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And this is where we need you. Tell us what you want us to talk about. What do you want? And we're going to make, <laughs> and we're going to make a Fight Me episode. Yeah. It's yeah. going to have to happen. We're, we're, we're going to have the, the sign that says, change my mind. And mm -hmm. we're just going to argue with you guys about something. We just yeah. haven't figured out. See, look here. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is so down. <laughs> we're going to make the change my mind episode, and we're going, yeah. to, we're going to come at you with some facts, and you guys can change our mind, or try to. I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to happen. I can't change his mind for anything. <laughs> so. um, All right, I think we're good. Yeah. Have a good day, guys. Have a good week. Spend See you next it. week on uh, Tuesday at 1.30. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a beautiful time.